I did not like the brand new Fallout show. I loved it. I loved every aspect of it. Its characters, its world, its cinematography, its acting, its dialogue, pretty much everything that I wanted to do, it nailed really well, above and beyond what you would actually expect. I think the trailer set a really weird precedent for what this show actually is. Originally, it seemed like it had a lot more humor, a lot more on the nose edginess and comedic value towards it that might have seemed off-putting. To a lot of people, including myself, that's just not the case here. There is humour within this show, but it's used very sparingly and intelligently to add value to the scene at hand. It's not something that carries the show, it's not something that waters down the show or takes away its tone or severity, it actually is utilised really nicely in the context of a Fallout universe. I am not a Fallout veteran, I am not a Fallout fan, I've played partial of some games, but I don't know enough about it to talk about the semantics between game and TV show adaptation. What I can say is that the show has done a very great job in setting a groundwork, and a really solid one at that, with multiple different storylines, multiple different characters, multiple different consequences and ideas and thematic purpose. There is just a lot of beautiful character exploration. If you watch a lot of TV shows, the idea of a post-apocalyptic world that's 8 to 10 episodes, that's filled with a bunch of CGI and a bunch of monsters and a bunch of stuff that has to be CG'd in sounds like a pretty rough time. There's not a, a ton of shows that are doing such high quality, high value, high consistency to such long lengths over a singular season. Only the best of the best that have a lot of money and have a lot of time to put that attention to detail within there. It takes talent. I was worried on that front. Fallout seems like one of those shows that would have a lot of CGI going into it that really can water down and make the experience overall fickle and admittedly I was curious. I was wondering how they would approach a world like this, how much emphasis they would put on these mutants and creatures and these locations that have to be so sprawling and dystopian and destructive and disgusting but also lived in. It's safe to say that they knocked it out of the park. Location wise, it's a mix of practical and CGI. Monster wise, it's a mix of what seemingly is small portions of practical but really well emphasized CGI and artistic strength and value behind it. So it's not just thrown in there, there's a strong artistic style behind it and sense of purpose and weight to really help these creatures move around. Even though there's not a lot of them, only a couple of major ones, they still look, feel and sound really well produced. I was definitely more impressed with locations because it is a mix of CGI and practical. There seems like there was a lot of big, massive onset locations where they would build these entire structures and city-like towns for the characters obviously to interact with. And you can really tell just by, I guess, how lively and in-lived a lot of these locations feel. They spent a lot of time on these locations to make them look and feel really pretty and fallout orientated. I like that. Story-wise, I was also very curious because I knew nothing about Fallout. I know it's about America getting nuked and the restart of civilization. It's basically it. So to my surprise, again, you have a really strong narrative. Strong characters, strong narrative behind each of those characters. And there's five to six different versions of it. All of them are different, take place in different locations. All of them interact and intermingle in some way, shape or form. And they all lead to the same end goal. But you don't know that. I personally really enjoy this approach. You are progressing with that character and learning about them. One character even has two different stories connected to them. That is the past and the present. You're being told that kind of at the exact same time, but more so if you don't have strong character work, strong growth, strong background, strong writing, it all kind of falls flat. And you'll notice that because some characters are definitely weaker than others, and that's kind of the jarring distinction between each progressional plot for their character. The main character, Lucy, is incredibly well done. 
very straightforward, very to the point, but her growth, her presence, and how she navigates throughout the entirety of this story is incredibly well done. What more could you expect from the voice actor of Jinx? I think this is a really great role for the actor, and their performance is superb, the writing behind the character Lucy is superb, and how they kind of go through this world of post-apocalyptics figuring out themselves trying to adapt to human lifestyle being from a vault originally there's just so much that has to go through this character before they can even kind of begin to accept what this new world is it'd be a very scary experience so quickly trying to adapt but also conflicting with what you've been born and raised with as a vault dweller is so night and day on the other hand a character like maximus is for me a little bit weaker I enjoy his story, but his character is very fickle in design. That's kind of the purpose. And there's a lot of reasons for this. Uh, you get a lot of backstory and a lot of uh, kind of character intermingling on why he acts the way that he does and the brotherhood that he's a part of. So there's a lot of exterior motives and things that play a big role on how he is as a human being. But because he is a fickle individual, always kind of changing his mind and flipping around on certain actions and things and consequences, he's very emotionally kind of driven as well. It's hard to really draw out a lot of the value that he brings to the table, especially when you have him compared to the main character Lucy or even Coop, the ghoul in the story. It's just not as grand in comparison. It's more belittling and kind of trotting and a little bit murky and muddy in a way. Almost like you, the more you get beat down, the harder it is to get back up, but you keep getting back up. I like that for his story. I think it's very interesting, but I just don't think it's fleshed out enough. It almost feels like they're missing a tiny bit of his arc in there that really kind of shows the type of character he is. I think it's very prominent towards the end. You definitely don't have to look into it that much. Maximus is still a great character, still very entertaining. Just for me personally, the comparison to others in the story, he's a little bit lacking. I love Coop. I love the ghoul. I love the dual storytelling experience that you get for him. He's a very strong character, very iconic in a way. He's kind of like the face of the story or could easily become that. I wish there was more for him. You definitely get a lot in the past and that is because the past helps set up the bigger macro uh, story beats but also very intricate micro beats as well. He is definitely the most important character, the center of this whole story, tying the past pre-war to the present now. You don't really get a lot of his present movement, however. He seems to have a bit of a reputation, a bit of history, a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, and of course you don't get to see it because of the time that he's spent on this earth. I would have loved to seen a little bit more of that established legacy, just because of how people talk about him. Having five to six separate stories pay off so well at the end of the season is a magnificent achievement, and really feels worthwhile. It doesn't even matter what character you like within this story, by the time you get to the end of the show, you're gonna feel satisfied. And you're gonna be very excited for the second season, which is really well done. The only thing that was really lacking, I would say, is a bit more environmental storytelling, which is, again, kind of oddly difficult to do because you're trying to do practical stuff mixed with CGI, mixed with that dystopian apocalyptic look that's been nuked so of course we're going to have the signature desert number one, number two, number three, but what about the cities? What about the junkyards? What about the forests? What about the rivers, the lakes, the different locations that they have are all nice. They all look good, but there's a bit too much similarity between them. And I guess you could argue, oh, that's kind of what it would be like, sure. But I think a bit more visual distinction between them, like the junkyard compared to Desert number one, for example, would be really nice. And I get it. You don't want to spend all that money on CGI. You don't want to do too much big practical stuff. Also, a, a personal nitpick of mine would probably be the monsters. Very weak, very lacking in that department. CGI orientated, money orientated. You're not going to see them all too often. I get it. But it feels very stale. 
We've got like two creatures that looked really good and a couple of cockroaches. My wish is for season two to fill that out a little bit more. More range, more variety, more often even. At the end of the day, I really enjoyed this show. Great story, great characters, great visuals, great acting, nice mystery driven narrative that is intertwined between five to six different people all coming together really nicely towards the end. It is a full experience that has you sitting on the edge of your seat a lot of the time. And of course, has your fingers crossed for a really strong second season. Welcome to the end of the video. Leave a like and subscribe. That'd be nice. Also, check out some of these videos here. The more you watch, the more YouTube recommends me and that supports me directly. So I'd love that and you may enjoy the video. Let me know your thoughts on the Fallout TV show. I'd love to hear them. And with that, I will see you all later.